to the Organizing Your Research Paper with a Thesis Statement workshop. This workshop is part of the um, larger uh, Research Skills mini courses um, series uh, run by the CUNY VA uh, program. I'm Duong Kamon Tanti Runkit and I'm a CUNY VA graduate fellow for this academic year. And the so the, the goal of this um, so this workshop was initially held on February 15th. I'm recording this workshop for training for purposes and to benefit anyone who, um, due to schedule conflict, couldn't make it to uh, the, the, the workshop. And just before we get started, just a quick reminder that um, students, if you want to um, present uh, your research, uh, you can apply to do so at the CUNY BA Student Showcase. The uh, due date for the application is just around the corner, February 24. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at the CUNY BA program and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. In addition, my colleagues have put together a uh, guide for uh, library and research resources around different campuses in the CUNY uh, system. This will save you a lot of time uh, in um, you know, completing your um, term papers or uh, bachelor's uh, thesis in whatever uh, field you may be uh, engaged in. So definitely uh, check it out. All right, so uh, the game plan uh, for today is um, I'll go over um, how to, like kind of the steps for how to craft a, a thesis statement and then uh, follow by how to use Zotero to organize the secondary literature that will help you um, craft a, a better thesis. In the initial workshop, we set aside some time for um, advising and, and, and for me to work with the, the attendees. However, um, as you are watching this uh, at home, if you uh, can't, uh, as you are, for those who are watching um, at home, please, uh, since there's no um, advising today, please still, you know, feel free to reach out uh, to the CUNY BA program. If you have any questions regarding the content of this workshop, my colleagues and I will be uh, happy to um, assist um, any kind of undergraduate student who reaches out. Thank you. So let's get started. So why do we need a, a thesis statement? So in your uh, courses at CUNY, usually uh, professors will assign you uh, a, a, a task that the, uh, will assign you some sort of writing assignment that will require that you argue for a particular position. Your goal is to persuade your reader and these assignments that are argument based come in two kind of major formats. The first one is you may be, um, the professor may want you to write an, 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 uh, something that resembles a newspaper editorial, such as you're arguing, uh, you're, you're arguing for maybe a policy solution to a social or, uh, issue. In such a case, you're trying to persuade your reader of a certain uh, point uh, of view. The other format is, you know, for example, a, uh, uh, an evidence-based uh, research uh, paper. And it can be that you, know, you collected survey data um, or experiment uh, uh, data in, you know, kind of the social sciences and uh, social sciences, natural sciences, or might be someone like me. I work in the humanities. I'm training to be uh, an academic historian. Our evidence is in the form of mostly of, you know, our kind of archival records. They're mostly largely um, qualitative. Uh, so in, in those, regardless of what kind of, uh, of format my, my data and my findings come in, um, I would have to argue in a research paper, not only of the significance of those findings, but the significance of how I interpret uh, those findings, right? So, however, I just want to uh, make it clear that having a clear argument that will persuade your reader 
of either your point of view on a particular social issue or of the significance of your findings and how you interpret your findings. These are skills that carry over into helping you further your, your career. Whether you're applying for a grant, a fellowship, uh, an, an, an internship, or you're applying to a conference to, uh, to present your work there, you want there usually your audience is going to be a, a selection committee you want to argue your case and persuade them to pick your project your application instead of you know um of of someone else's so this is just to illustrate that whatever whenever your professor assigns you an argument based um a project it is the the skills that you're developing there carry over into your into you furthering your career as well so there are kind of three major elements of, of a thesis statement. We went over the argument. We went over the significance. One of the last thing that I want to add is that a good thesis statement also provides like a, a brief preview of how you will present your supporting evidence. I've prepared an example later in this uh, workshop about how a historian does that in writing a uh, uh, a history book. So three, there, there are kind of four um, major steps that I've kind of recommended in putting together a, a thesis statement. You always want to start with a central question or in some fields, uh, folks say research question. So um, once you, you have kind of a, a research question, you want to start, you want to follow up by, you know, kind of familiarizing yourself with the secondary kind of literature. You know, how have, and ask yourself, how have previous researchers answered your central question? Chances are you're not going to be, very rarely are you going to be the first person to ever attempt to answer a particular central question. Chances are there's fo um, folks have uh, attempted this before you. Therefore, not only are you trying to sort of learn by emulating them, you also want to develop like an assessment of how well did they do their job, right? Do you think they did a competent job of answering the central question? And this is not to, to you know, f to be kind of critical or mean in any sense. What you're trying to do as a researcher is develop a new way of doing research. And that involves improving on existing ways in which people have done research. So, you know, if you, in, in trying to figure out whether previous researchers have done a competent job, you're, you're, what you're doing is you're looking for a way to sort of build on their work and improve upon their work. Once you have that out of the way, you want to gather and analyze, you know, your evidence. And lastly, the fourth step is, now that you have, now that you've, um, you have your secondary literature, you have your, your evidence, you want to combine the two in a way that helps you develop an answer to your central question. What a thesis statement is, is, is your, it's your answer to the central question. And you have to an try to answer your question in a way that illustrates how the solution that you've come up with and it can even be a new way of analyzing existing data, or it can even be the kind of tried true way of analyzing data, but your data set is new, right? Or, or you're collecting your data or your evidence from a new source of, in, uh, of, of, of information. How is all of this, you know, kind of an improvement to previous solutions? That's something you also have to be able to illustrate as well. And the most important part, one more time, I'll, um, I'll, uh, it, it, I can't emphasize this enough, is that you have your, um, your thesis is your answer to, is your research answer to your research question. All right, you have to answer the question. All right, let's move on to an example so that I, I can show you how someone, uh, how, you know, kind of very respected um, historian uh, kind of structures, uh, 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 structures their, their thesis, right? And this example is going to show how, uh, kind of the, the four steps that I've gone over in, in action.
So I've taken this example from uh, like a highly acclaimed popular um, uh, work of, of history. It's uh, on the American Revolution. It's Robert Parkinson's Common Cause. And so in this book, um, uh, by the way, the topic is about the, the American Revolution. So the central question that this historian has, has set out to answer is, what motivated patriot leaders to start a revolution? And what kind of a society did they create? And so at, at face value, you might think, oh my god, you know, American Revolution, this is a topic pe so many people have written about. There's got to be, there's so much out there. Oh my God, it's so overwhelming. How, you know, where do I, where do I even start, right? So this is where Parkinson um, is a good example of how to go about tackling a very broad <laughs> and a very complex topic is that um, he, uh, Parkinson kind of breaks the problem down and focuses on just one aspect of the American Revolution, and that is he focuses on the use of newspapers uh, in previous studies. So he's he's interested in being in kind of con he's in, in how previous historians have used um, newspapers to kind of capture the experience of. Uh, of, of America, of, you know, kind of colonists during the American Revolution. And for those of you who might not be too familiar with um, the, um, the history of, you know, um, of early America, during the late colonial period, this is, you know, kind of the late um, 18th century, there were newspapers operating in the 13 colonies and historians use um, newspapers to, in a way, put themselves in the shoes of people living through the late colonial period and and kind of putting themselves in the shoes of these colonists and seeing how do these people process the news and how do they kind of respond to the social upheaval that's kind of unfolding around them. So that's the general idea. Of course, you know, since he's focusing on how previous historians have used newspapers as evidence, his source base is going to be newspapers and other print media, right? And, you know, when you're a historian, you do have your kind of main source base. And of course, you supplement it with other types of evidence as well. So I just want to make clear that um, his book is not just based on newspapers. He also has other types of evidence, but newspapers and other print media remain kind of the core of, of, of the, um, the project. So once he's got those set up steps, um, one through three, right? You now, now you got to come up with uh, an answer to, to the research question, right? So let me backtrack a little bit. In looking at the existing kind of the secondary existing kind of secondary literature, one of the things that um, Parkinson noticed was that previous historians have either focused on the headlines or the ads, and they don't. Not only do they not pay all that much attention to the reporting, but they also don't look at like the news, at like each newspaper edition as, as, as a whole. And so Parkinson wants to find out, you know, how does, how, how does the story look different if we focus on the reporting and we take, uh, and we, you know, we don't ignore other pieces of, of the newspaper, but we take them uh, together sort of in the context of the reporting. And he found that once he focused on the reporting, um, he argues that patriot leaders capitalized on three fears that pervaded society in the late colonial period. And these were fear of warfare against Native Americans, um, slave rebellions, and disobedience by women and children against kind of male heads uh, of households. So these are the, the three fears. And part of the reason this book makes such a good example is because his thesis has, has the components of the three fears. If you look at the book's structure, and you can get this book free on um, JSTOR through uh, the GC library system, in uh, Parkinson structures his book to address each of these three fears and then ties them all in together uh, at the end of, of his analysis in a way that kind of answers, well, how did these three fears, uh, you know, kind of shape a, a, a new society coming out of a revolution? So um, as you can see, once again, part of the reason that I use uh, the, the common cause 
book as an example is because this is uh, an example of, of, a, of, a prod, of a research project that does a fairly good job of engaging with the existing literature and, and nevertheless like existing literature on a very broad and a very complex topic. And so I recommend that if you are ever in the same position where you're studying a topic that so much has been written about previously, you want to up your game in how you manage the volume of secondary literature that you have to process. And you can do that through getting a software like Zotero. The nice thing about Zotero is that it, it not only allows you to build a database of existing literature relevant to your project, it also doubles as a note taking software. So it's kind of a, a one stop service and it's free because I mean, my colleagues and I have noticed that different um, campuses provide different subscriptions to, to different software. And that, you know, if we recommend you one software versus another, you might not be able to access uh, them from your home campus. Therefore, um, we recommend um, Zotero because, you know, um, it's, it's free. So let's see how it works. So first of all, um, you would, um, you could download it. It's, um, uh, it works on all platforms. Not only do you download the uh, software itself, but you would want to download a browser plugin so that it would allow you to automatically with a click of a button s uh, save websites right um, and turn them into a citation uh, automatically and so once you um, and this is just um, you once you uh, have um, Zotero set up and you start adding uh, these little um, you the both your um, secondary literature and your your websites and also your uh, your primary sources um, uh, into uh, the, the the Zotero database you can then now organize them into uh, folders and as you can see here um, I have this this book it's it's a uh, it's a history book it's called making freedom the underground railroad and the politics of slavery if I click on it uh, it will open this tab to the right where under info, it has all the citation information. Zotero can add this for me to uh, this book automatically or it can or I can add it manually. It's up to me. Oftentimes, if you add it automatically, what you'll uh, have to do is you might have to clean up the, the formatting a little bit here, but it's still easier than uh, adding it uh, manually. All right. And so if you want to, uh, for example, if I want to take notes on this Making Freedom book, I would just navigate from the info, uh, rather than click on the info button, I would click on the next button, which is notes. And then I can add, you know, um, different uh, notes to, uh, based on, you know, the how many chapters or, or, or that I, or how far I get in this book. And so as a result, it will turn the, um, the, the icon into a, there's a little drop down uh, button here that you can use and then you can add as many notes uh, uh, as, as you like and if you make a mistake you can just delete them them here. Um, for if you want to you can the nice thing about Zotero is that if your research doesn't um, use as kind of uh, your evidence that comes in other format that's such as you know a map or in this case you know like a podcast um, you can um, you can add those uh, manually as well uh, Zotero will have a kind of a like a form for, for you to fill out you don't have to worry about the the, the, the formatting and so these are different um, options that you you can use so you, you pick whatever works uh, best for you Books and academic articles have their own serial number, um, ISBNs for books and DOIs. So for example, if you go into uh, like JSTOR, um, JSTOR will provide the DOIs for you, just pop the DOIs uh, in here, or you, know, you can find the book on Amazon. There'll be an ISBN here, just pop it into the, um, click on the one icon and pop the serial number in here. Um, Zotero will automatically generate the citation 
uh, for you. All you got to do is clean it up. You don't have to add anything with a serial number. You can use the auto generate uh, one button here. And so this wraps up our um, workshop. As, and, and just to quickly summarize, there are four steps to uh, crafting a thesis statement. Uh, the f you always start with a central question. It doesn't have to be an original um, central question. It can be something um, previous researchers have attempted before. Uh, because after all, you know, your goal is to master the, the, the secondary literature and you know, have an assessment of how well people who've come before you have attempted to answer this uh, particular uh, central question. As you know, you know we're, we're researchers. It doesn't matter what field you, you operate in. We stand on the sh shoulder of, of giants. You know, we're always trying to improve how previous researchers um, come up with solutions to um, existing problems. Therefore, you know, Zotero can help you get a better grasp of the secondary literature, no matter how much has been uh, written uh, about it. Zotero can can help you take notes so that you know you could be in a better position to break down the amount of existing literature that you have to uh, to, to 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 manage. Um, you can also use Zotero to um, keep track of the source of information where you're getting your data or your archival um, evidence if you're someone in the uh, humanities. Uh, last of all, I mean, Zotero can't help with this, but this is something you want to be mindful of and you want to keep practicing is that make sure whatever um, thesis you craft, make sure that your argument uh, is an answer to your research question or your central question. You always have to remember uh, to answer your research question. And once again, if you're watching this uh, at home, please make sure that uh, uh, if you want to uh, present your work at the CUNY BA Student Showcase, please make sure that you fill out the application by February 24. Um, me and my colleagues are here, so if you need help with the uh, application or have any questions about the, uh, the event, uh, please uh, reach out to us. Uh, thank you so much. Take care.